Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. We continue our topic which is sustainable product brick. So today we want to go through about manufacturing process of brick. So here we have 10 process for making a bricks. Start with winning and end with shipping and storage. There are two types bricks productions and process, which is steam method and pressing method. Steam method is where we adjust the autoclaving time as well as pressure. And then we can get the performance characteristics of the bricks. Pressing method is used for producing solid and hollow bricks, where we press in mold using dynamic press heat. There are five basic stages in brick manufacture. Through many of the operations are interdependent. So we have winning and storage, followed by preparations, forming, drying, as well as firing and cooling. The first process is winning and storage. So winning means obtaining the raw materials for the bricks production from the site. Clay are mainly composed by silica and alumina. Alumina is soft and plastic part of the clay. Alumina will absorb water and makes the clay plastics. It also melts when burned. Three types of clay, namely surface clay, shales and also fire clays. The most suitable materials for brick making is the clay with 30% sand and also silt. The presence of sand will reduce the shrinkage occurring during the burning process. Besides that, the clay also should have sufficient plasticity after adding water in order to ease the molding process and also shaping process. For second process, which is preparation, the clay is crushed to break up large chunk and remove the stones. The clay also will ground to mixing with the raw materials. Most plants of manufacturing bricks will screen the clay, passing it through inclined vibrating screen to control the particle sizes. Forming process. The first process in forming is tempering. Tempering is produce homogeneous plastic mass ready for molding. It is most commonly achieved by adding water to the clay in a pulp mill. After purging process, the plastic clay mass is ready to go to the forming step. There are three principal process for forming brick, which is stiff mud process, soft mud process, and also dry press process. So this is the picture of pulp mills and extruder. Fourth process is drying. When wet clay units come out of the mold or cutting machine, they actually contain 7 to 30% of moisture. This depending on the forming method. So before the firing process begin, most of this water is evaporated in drying chamber. So we use temperature in the drying chamber is about 38% to 204%. Okay, then the drying time is about 1 day to 2 days varies with different clays. Although heat may be generated specially for dry chamber, it is more commonly supplied as exhaust heat from firing kiln. Heat and humidity must be carefully regulated to avoid excessive cracking in the wear. There are four basic types of kiln. First, we have clam. 
from the picture. And then we have intermittent kills. And then we have continuous kills. And then lastly we have tunnel kills. This is the types for drying process. Firing or cooling. Firing and cooling. Firing is actually known as burning. It is one of the most special steps in the manufacture of bricks. It requires about 40 to 150 hours depending upon kill type and other variables. Several kills are in use, the chief types being tunnels and predict kills, and the fuel may be natural gas, coal, oil, soda, propane, or combinations of field fuels. For predict kills, that is loaded, fired, allowed to cool and unloaded, after which the same process all repeated. For a tunnel kills, units are similarly loaded on special car, which pass through various temperature zones as they travel through the tunnel. The heat condition in each zone are carefully controlled and the kills operate continuously. We have divided into six general stages of firing. Start with water smoking, which, which is the water will be evaporating, dehydrations, oxidations, vitrifications, flashings, and lastly cooling. The actual temperature will differ with the clay or shale. However, in general, the temperature are, so we can see here, the temperature is increasing. For water smoking, the temperature is up to 204 degrees Celsius. For dehydration, it increasing to nearly 1000 degrees Celsius. For oxidation, it's from 538 to 982. Vitrification process show very high temperature. It is from 871 to 1316 degrees Celsius. After the temperature has reached the maximum and is maintained for a prescribed time, the, cool the cooling process will begin. So, this is different cooling period for different kilns. For product kilns, the cooling period is 48 to 72 hours. For tunnel kilns, it must be more than 48 hours. And the rate of cooling has a direct effect on color. And beside that, the excessively rapid cooling which actually will cause cracking of the clay bricks. Therefore, cooling is an important stage in the firing process. We go through the applications of engineering bricks. It is for internal and external load-bearing walls. It also for piers and columns. Partition walls, party walls, cladding and facing, foundation like this picture, perimeter and garden walls, or like this picture, paving and flooring. Then we go to the concrete blocks. Concrete blocks is made of several materials but the most common is concrete. Due to its high compressive strength and ease to handling individual blocks. These concrete blocks is assorted in sizes and also shapes. The size of concrete block is specified by nominal dimension. 
So this concrete block is actually available as either heavyweight or lightweight blocks. How we determine it? It's by types of aggregate use. Solid concrete blocks must have at least 75% of its cross section must be made up of concrete. Block having over 25% of its cross section are empty is classified as hollow block. The usual hollow blocks concrete are making up to 40 to 505 centimeters square of its cross sections. So this is the nominal size of concrete blocks. Then we have sustainable bricks, which is autoclave bricks, where the bricks using waste materials as the main compositions. So we can see different picture of the sustainable bricks. Autoclave bricks is a lightweight bricks, energy efficiency and possess good insulating properties. It is also non-toxic, can be reusable, renewables and also recyclables. Hence, we consider it as eco-friendly compared to the conventional burned clay bricks, which are under environmentally unsustainable. Specialized equipment are required for its productions and the current production cost per unit is still higher than the conventional bricks. So from this statement, we can say that autoclave bricks production is costly compared to the conventional bricks production. So bricks using waste materials. So we have two types of waste materials here. We have inorganics and also organics. Inorganic waste is from industry and organic waste are from agriculture or municipal sector. Examples of organic solid waste is coal combustion residue, CCR. For example, is the waste from the oil palm effluent, oil palm mill factory. And then we have aluminium, copper, iron, and zinc tailing, and red mud from alumina refinery. And then for organic waste is from agriculture waste. For example, we have bagasse. Bagasse is like sugarcane bagasse, rice husk, jute fiber, paddy straw, and as well as groundnut shell. These types of fiber is very good for bricks. Increase the strength of the brick. So then we go through types of mortar joint. We have different types. Start with mortar joint types of concave joint. And then we have V joints. Used to emphasize joints and conceal small irregularities. And we have weather joints. Of course, we have flask joint. Flask joint requires special care to make the joint weatherproof. And then we have squeeze joint. And lastly, beaded joint.